Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. January the 23rd, 2021. Jonathan Hammond coming from Norwich, UK. Just to say um, how God works, um, my wife needed some photocopiers, uh, photocopies, and of course everything shut down. And I vaguely remember there was a shop in a certain suburb of Norwich. So I've gone to that shop, um, I've sat outside the shop, and um, it was a mundane inquiry. But of course I know by divine appointment, I'm sitting outside the shop where the people are going in and out. And of course they see the signs on the car and the signs are very clear. We've got uh, John 3, 16, we've got Psalm 37, three to seven, Psalm 23, um, Jeremiah 1, before I created you in the womb, I knew you, um, and Jesus loves you, in the signs of the windows on the car. So people see the signs, and they're obviously pointing to God. They're pointing to our God, Jesus Christ, John 3, 16. So I know it's enough for me to sit outside the shop, showing the signs to the customers coming in and out of the shop. And eventually I went into the shop to see if they do have a photocopier, and they do. So that's for future reference. It wasn't convenient for me to do it right now. So while I was in the shop, I made a purchase. I came out and outside the shop were four, three children and um, a teenage adult, and they'd read the signs on the car so I pointed to the signs and I said, this is true. And the older girl, the teenager, said, uh, yes, I believe that too. And then instantly there was fellowship in the Holy Spirit. And then the Lord took over the conversation and encouraged them in the faith. And uh, basically, um, the Lord was speaking to the children um, about them as believers and positioning the smallest child between the two older children for the older boys to look after their little sister. And um, this is how God is building his church people. And the Lord uh, told them that they are the church people, not physical bricks and mortar, but people. But children, children at that as well. We're all little children, meant to be by now. We're meant to be so grown up that we become childlike. Not childish, but childlike. Because we have one eternal Father, the Father of heaven, the Father of Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. And of course we know, by now, we know, if we're mature in the things of God, we know that we are in Christ, clothed with Christ, the righteousness of Christ, the robes of righteousness of Christ, and under the blood of Christ. So when the Father, God, looks at us, he looks at us as his Son, because we're clothed in Christ. And, and Father's attitude to us is the same as that of his attitude to his only begotten Son. And that's men and women. God looks on us as if the same attitude towards us as he has to Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the churches. I'm not talking about religion or denominations, buildings, structures, hierarchies, charities and the like. What I'm talking about are the people of God. We are the people of God, the people of the pasture of Jesus Christ, the shepherd. Jesus is my master, my teacher. Jesus is my head. He's the head of my life, my body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the chief priest over me as the temple of the Holy Spirit. A temple not made by human hands. 
The spirit of man is not able to be engineered by man. The spirit of man comes from God. Before I was created in the womb, God knew me. And that is the eternal truth. Before each one of us were created in the womb, God knew us. God said that to Jeremiah. Before I created you in the womb, I knew you, says God, our creator. God has created us in his image. Kindness, goodness, love, patience, gentleness, a teaching, a teacher. There's the image of a teacher in, in us. And each one of us has different gifting, different purposes, combinations. Some are carers. And Christ uses the caring ones to care for one another. And Christ cares for the carers. It's Christ who pastors the pastors. It's Christ all the time who leads us, who guides us. And there can only be one highest power in this world, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Now, what I understood this morning, the Lord showed me something very simple. I was preparing some uh, cut-up lemons in some water to make some, just some water flavoured with lemon juice. And the Lord showed me something, a better way of doing something. Something I invented, but then the Lord showed me there was a better way. And in that little moment, I was stuck in my way or to obey God and do it a better way. And we have free will to do things the best we can. And that is the heart of, I would suggest, every true, proper, sincere church leader they are doing the best they can to lead a church. But God can enable us to do things better and better. The only requisite God has for us is that we submit one to another so that we can do things better and better. The trouble is man doesn't want to be told by other men how to improve what he's doing because he's doing the best he can but when Christ comes along through somebody else a third party who may not be a member of that man's fellowship congregation uh, uh, whatever you want to call it membership club somebody who's not a, a member of the local church comes in and witnesses something and God wants to use that person to improve the service and that's called prophecy. But it's very hard to, to, to speak to someone whose mind is made up that they're doing the best they can. And whilst God recognizes that man is doing the best he can to worship him, God, there are better ways of carrying out that worship. But if man will not receive prophecy, then arguably the situation becomes Laodicea and the Spirit of God leaves that meeting and God is outside knocking on the door to come back in. Now I'm not being specific about any particular local church in Norwich UK because times have changed, times have moved on. Arguably there is no churches of Norwich UK there are no churches of Norwich UK we are the church the body of Christ and each one of us has the head Jesus Christ one spirit one Lord one baptism one father over all one faith Ephesians 4 and Ephesians 5 so because of the lockdown the first time in early part of um, 2020 Church meetings took place at home between husband and wife, wife and husband, and children, once a week on a Sunday morning. And then God has really shown us that church is always people. 
twos and threes, fours and fives, it's always about people, not about buildings. We can meet as two or three, four or five outside our, our buildings, even our own homes. And that's what we did. Trevor and I, after the first lockdown was eased, we started meeting as two, then three, then four, and then four or five, five or six, up to 12 or 13 at one stage. Just people meeting together, circle of chairs, round a table, outside cafes. The church of God's people, living and active, faithful, obedient disciples and ambassadors for King Jesus. And, and Christ is coming as the bridegroom for the saved, the virgin bride of Christ's people, disciples, ambassadors, obedient servants. But he's also coming as judge for those who are not in Christ. You know this as much as I do. The world was already a wicked, evil place outside Christ. Since 2020, coming now into 2021, arguably there are aspects of the world becoming more and more decadent, immoral, evil, wicked, perverse. But God's people, we who are in Christ, the virgin, spotless lamb, the bride of Christ, we are in Christ under the blood of Jesus Christ we're now not distracted by the things of this world because we're looking heavenwards. New Jerusalem. The king is coming to take his faithful servants. And Jesus has said that when he comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find his people doing what he wants us to do? And you cannot do what Christ is asking you to do, but commanding you to do, unless you hear his voice. So it comes down to what Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. But it's not just about hearing God, it's about obeying God. So going back to the point that when I'm doing something and it's the best I can, and then the Lord says to me, you could do it this way, God is, uh, God is the creator. God is an inventor. God is a problem solver. God has a way of working things to become better and better. Improving. God is an improver. And when I was in business, when I was in local government, as a very minor servant in the county council, basically I did as I was told. But because my private business days, when I was very much involved with processes, I could see improvements to be made to save time, which means to save money. And of course, my suggestions were taken up by management and improvements were made. But God is the improver. God wants us to be better and better and better and better. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He is transforming us day by day, moment by moment, into the likeness of Jesus Christ. He's conforming us, our minds, our thoughts, our feelings, to that of Jesus Christ himself. At no point do we become Christ. At no point do we become God. At no point do we become the Holy Spirit. Because God is God, but God dwells in us, his born again, Holy Spirit filled, obedient disciple ambassadors. It's always about the king commanding us, sending us, instructing us precisely what to do and what not to do, what to speak and what not to speak. In fact, Jesus says, if you read the Gospels, and I do encourage you, read the Gospels about who Jesus was, is, but was, is, and what he was saying, and it's the same as what he is saying today. 
And Jesus wasn't just instructing the first pillars of the, the, the new church, the first church. Jesus was and is instructing us, each one of us, the members of the body of Christ. Because the church is each person and two and three when we're gathered together in the Holy Spirit. When you read the Gospels, you'll see what Jesus was talking about. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I long to gather you like a mother hen gathers chicks. But you're not willing. You won't listen. Jesus is telling you now. He's telling me. My sheep hear my voice. It is about hearing God. What is God saying? I'm not, t I'm not just saying follow the Bible. I'm saying follow what God is saying by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is there to make sure that we're not straying off from what God has said. The Holy Spirit and the, the written scriptures, the voice of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, he's the one who speaks into the eldership. But if the eldership run a closed, a closed room mentality that no one can speak to the elders because the elders have a direct line to God and no one can knock on the door of the room of the eldership, or even slip a note under the door of the eldership room, then I'm sorry to say those eldership, that eldership has become a cult group under the spirit of a cult. Because we're all accountable one to another, all of us. We have to be open to one another. Because a closed shop, a closed room of leadership, becomes a cultic group. One man surrounded by a group of yes-men. But the church was never meant to be led by pastors. Eldership is not just the pastor. And the elders aren't there to back up the pastor. The Holy Spirit is not a man. He is God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they are one. He is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father will send you the Holy Spirit. Another counsellor, meaning just like me, says Jesus about himself. So Jesus is my Lord, my master, my teacher. He's the one who guides me into all truth by the Holy Spirit, who indwells me and indwells every born-again, spirit-filled believer in the body of Christ. Well, that's you. If you're born again, that's you I'm talking to. We're all accountable one to another. There is only one church, the body of Christ, the one body of the one Christ, brethren of the one God. There can't be 50,000 churches in heaven, 50,000 denominations. There is no division in the body of Christ. The flock is one flock. But Jesus has said, and again, read the Gospels, I've not come to bring peace, but division. The sheep and the goats have to be divided. And goat herds don't like the fact that Jesus is coming to take his sheep away from the herd of goats. The flock of sheep is a flock of sheep. The herd of goats is a herd of goats. But Jesus is the shepherd. Goat herds are not the shepherd. Jesus is not a legalistic Pharisee. Saul was converted to Paul, who understood the law to the nth degree. But then he understood grace to the nth degree. Even to the point of having a messenger from Satan, a thorn in his flesh, that he had to contend with, he had to suffer on his own personal cross every day. If you hear God, it stands to reason you also hear the devil. Jesus himself was tempted in every way. And when he was in the desert, the devil came to tempt him with scriptures. But Jesus, who was in the Holy Spirit, in the will of the Father, 
as the only begotten Son? Jesus knew that the devil is a manipulator using Scripture, trying to get Jesus to bow down to him and to accept that if he, Jesus, became number two to the devil, then the devil would make him the next Caesar. The devil would make him the king of Israel, the next David, to take over the chief priest, to take over from Herod, from chief priest. But that wasn't the father's plan, the father of Jesus. Now that's very clear to us. If you're mature in these things, that makes absolute sense to you. Jesus is the king of the Jews. He came for the Jews, and through the Jews, the Jews, the, the Israelis, if you like, in modern terms, reached out to the Gentiles. And Saul was granted grace. The murderer of Christians was granted by the grace of God, the mercy of God, not to go to hell, but given a chance to change sides from being a son of the devil, a Pharisee, to being a son of God. And, and God called Paul to go to the Gentiles. He went to the Jews, wherever he went, he went to the synagogue. He tried to engage with the local Jews in the synagogue. And then he went off to the Gentiles to bring the good news that through Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb, we could be grafted in with the Jews into the root of Israel, God. The God of Israel. Not just the God of Abraham but the God of Israel, the God who created Adam and Eve, the very God in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and the Word was Jesus and is Jesus, the living Word of the living God, Jesus Christ, the living bread, the living water. Everything about Jesus Christ is living, living and active, the resurrected power of the Lord Jesus Christ, my master and my king. The Lord's told me not to bow my knee to anybody in this world. No man, no woman, nobody. I bow the knee to you, Jesus, knowing that you are above all of us, the creator of the universe, above all the created beings, the created things, the creatures, that you, Jesus, are Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Master above all masters, king above all kings, judge above all judges, the highest power above all powers and authorities and principalities. And the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sin. And go and sin no more is always ringing in my ears, always, always and always and always, always will. Go and sin no more. It's a choice. No excuses. It's a choice. Go in, sin no more. The blood of the Lamb, the name of Jesus. Sin is always crouching at the door, but that's on the outside of our lives, not on the inside. It's on the outside. My house, my temple belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, who's, who's given me the Holy Spirit to cleanse me by the blood of the Lamb to refine me by the fire of the Holy Spirit, to keep me clean, to keep me free from all sin. Because there's no excuse for sin. We're talking about deliberately disobeying God. God is patient. God is kind. God doesn't keep a record of wrongs. But also God expects us not to sin, not to want to sin. The potential to sin is always there. To look away from God and to look to this world in itself is a sin. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. This world is full of distractions. Full of distractions. But our mind is set on Christ. Not just Christ, but the Jerusalem is coming. Jesus is coming as the King. We know. Read the four Gospels. See what Jesus said about the end times. 
And don't be deceived, because the devil is a deceiver. He's using scripture to trick you, to manipulate you, to keep you earthbound, even trying to bring your kingdoms to life again in your church buildings. But just look at the parable of the Jehovah's Witnesses, how they started as a, as a subgroup, a Christian group that split off from mainstream Christianity to form itself into a, a small unit, the Watchtower Society. A society within society to build their church buildings and they called them the Kingdom Halls, believing them to be the Kingdom of God. They built physical buildings called the Kingdom Halls. And every gener generation of Jehovah's Witnesses have become worse and worse legalistic. They're lost. They call themselves Christian, but they're not. They've added to the scripture, they've changed the Bible, their own version. And they are as much lost as the Mormons. Cults, sects, social clubs, none of these are the church of God. The body of Christ is Holy Spirit filled. We're a spiritual building, not a legal organization. We don't belong to one man, to shareholders. We are set apart by God, a holy nation. God himself has called from out of the nations, a people for himself, a remnant. And God inhabits us, the body of Christ. And God is calling us to be salt and light, as he ever did. Read the four Gospels. What Jesus said to his disciples is exactly what he's saying to each one of us, the obedient disciple, servants, ambassadors of him, the king. You know all this. So why am I telling you? Because one day at a time, we're, we're coming to that place of being closer and closer to our going. The finishing line approaches for each one of us, one day at a time. We don't know when Christ is coming, only the Father knows. Christ himself doesn't know. And this is why we don't know, because Christ in us would tell us, but he doesn't know. He's waiting on the Father as ever. And we're in the body of Christ. We're all waiting for the ultimate redemption is when we've left this physical world and we're with God. Our minds cannot comprehend what that means because our minds are finite, but the Holy Spirit gives us a sense of the future. We read the Bible, we get dreams and visions, we see the time is coming. There will be no more death, no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. Until then, Christ commands us. He's given us the great commission, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the demons. Isaiah 61, 1 to 11. This is Christ's commission, the Christ who's in us and uses us to open people's eyes to the truth, spirit, soul, and body. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. God bless you. Bye for now.